This video is going to be about functional groups. So functional groups are going to be groups of atoms that you'll find on larger molecules that uh, give that molecule some sort of chemical uh, characteristic. So the first functional group we're going to look at is a hydroxyl group. So hydroxyl groups are useful because when you attach this to a molecule, it helps that molecule to be able to interact with water because we know that the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is a polar covalent bond, which is going to make this group polar so it can interact with other polar substances like water. So we see this um, a lot on sugars, like glucose and fructose and things like that. And so because it helps that molecule be able to interact with water, it helps it to stay dissolved in our bloodstream, uh, which is very important for keeping us alive. So this next group right here is called a carbonyl group. So carbonyl groups are, again, very important in sugars. Um, so carbonyl groups are going to help us distinguish between the two kinds of sugars, which you'll learn more about later, but they're called aldoses and ketoses, um, and the difference between those two groups comes from differences in their carbonyl functional group uh, and what it's attached to. So the next group we're going to look at is a carboxyl group or a carboxylic acid group. So similarly to the hydroxyl group, this group is very polar, so when we add it to a molecule, it's going to help that molecule interact with water. These are also found in sugars, um, so that contributes to sugars being able to interact with water, as well as in fatty acids. So the reason fatty acids are called fatty acids is because this group can also act as an acid, because this proton right here can be taken off of this group under certain conditions, which is going to uh, lower the pH and make the solution more acidic. And then uh, later on, when the pH of the environment changes, it can regain that proton um, and in that situation act as a base. Um, so. In, in that respect, this group would be considered an ionizable group, which means when you take this proton off, it gets charged, and then when you put it back on, the charge goes back to neutral. So it's ionizable, which is going to be very important in um, proteins. So another group that's very important in proteins is this amino group. And similarly to the carboxyl group, the amino group is an ionizable group. So it can gain a, another proton and become positively charged under certain conditions. And then under other conditions, it can give up that proton and go back to neutral. And so again, this is very important in amino acids, which is kind of where they get their name from. So that's going to be also very important in protein structures. So another group that's important in protein structure, actually, is this sulfhydryl group. So the sulfhydryl group is super important in protein structure because it's found on a certain amino acid called cysteine, and then these two groups can interact with one another to form something called a disulfide bond, which is a very stable interaction that helps to stabilize the overall structure of a lot of the proteins in our bodies. So the next group we're going to look at is this phosphate group. So phosphate groups are very important in nucleic acids. Uh, they're part of that structure of our DNA. That's why it's called a uh, phosphodiester bond, the bond between two nucleotides, it's because we have this phosphate group in it. Uh, this group is also important in being able to interact with water molecules because we have these oxygen atoms that can interact with the hydrogens on the water molecules. And then this final group that we're going to look at is called a methyl group. So methyl groups, the most important thing that methyl groups do in biological systems is they can get added to our DNA. So when they get added to our DNA, they leave distinct marks on it that's going to change our pattern of gene expression. Um, and so that's really the most important thing that methyl groups do in biology, um, but it's still important to have a good understanding of all of these different functional groups for your current and future studies of biological systems. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.